what advice would you give to people who, whatever background they have to prepare and go on this OSCP journey? It would consist of a few things, a few bullet points, I guess. Uh, for one, time management. Um, just kind of uh, calculating, knowing in the back of your head, this is how much time I can put into this and uh, you know when I can put it into this and working with your job, your manager, however, you know, whatever it might be, so that you can a locate the time that you need because it is a very time intensive course. Um, you do need to for your own learning process in the brain, you need to have that time and allow yourself those intervals of time where you can go undisturbed and just read, take in the material, go through the exam machines, start to understand the principles. Um, that would be the first thing for success with the OSCP is time management. The second thing I would say is that since I started, there have been a lot of publications and a lot of, there are a lot of new resources available to anybody. This is all on public domain. Um, even my own site, I did it just because of that, because I'm like, I want a more centralized location for the stuff that I found, right? And I, I, I feel like there's been so many, everything from GitHub pages to, to blogs that have gone up with people that are excited about this industry and they just wanna, they wanna get stuff out there. Um, so definitely making use of like the Google Hacking Database um, at Offsec, our Google Hacking Database to understand, at least learning Google dorking because that will help you a lot when you're searching for something that skill set will help you a lot when you're looking for a specific type of file, a specific binary, uh, something that you think might work in the lab or might not work. You know, it's it's things that you want to be able to know how to use Google for. Like uh, Google Hacking Database is great for that. So that's the second resource. If I could give a third resource, I'd say don't underestimate the power of um, of your family and 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 keeping in touch with your family. And, and telling them you know, how you're doing because they are your ultimate support group when you're doing anything challenging. And um, keeping in contact with your family and letting them know how you're doing um, through such a difficult thing can actually provide you a degree of peace or a measure of peace knowing that that family support is there. Um, and uh, fourth, I mean, this kind of goes along with the second, is making use of any uh, the new types of resources, all of the stuff that we're putting out. So if offensive security, you know, cough, cough, if offensive security is putting out new machines every week or every other week and proving grounds, guess where a new student should be? They should be improving grounds and they should be trying those machines and they should be trying to conquer them as well because those are incredible machines. And there, a lot of them have very unique uh, applications. So proving grounds as well, um, especially if you're starting because there's there's no real, it's 20 bucks a month. I even paid the 20 bucks a month just because of the convenience for me to be like, okay, I need to throw up a Windows machine real quick just to try something out, right? And just for that alone is worth the 20 bucks, but to have so many machines and so many varieties and ways of things of getting in, that would be the fourth item, kind of using that as a resource. And, um, and yeah, that would, that would, those would be the four things I would say okay. that, that will really help you succeed and actually end up passing your OSCP. Fifth thing, notation. I would say keeping notes of everything that you've learned. Um, don't just let it fly by you or something, you know, make sure that you, you, you put it down on paper and that you're learning these things and looking into why these things happen um, because misconfigurations can come to mind and you end up figuring out, like when you start figuring out the why behind each of these vulnerable machines, you actually end up teaching yourself computer science and even further than that, computer security, CompuSec, uh, principles, even from university that would impress a professor. So really understanding these machines. And then even after you've rooted it or got NT system authority, whatever it might be, hooray, but really try to take a step back from those vulnerable machines and during your journey and be like, okay, what was the point? 
behind this? What was, what was the message the author of this machine was trying to say? What was the intended route? Did I go the intended route? It's worth asking that question um, because more often than not, that will help you the most. And you know, repetition is also how we learn. Uh, caring about the things we do is also how we learn. So if you combine repetition with caring, you're gonna end up learning a lot more and it'll make you a better penetration tester.